Hello and welcome to Neurosurgery Written Board Crash Course. Today we're going to talk about epithalamus and this is part one of the two videos. My name is Chen and let's begin. So there are a few structures that are named according to their location in relation to the thalamus. The thalamus is very central and is located right around here and immediately below it is the hypothalamus. And now dorsal to it we have a series of structures right about here, including the pineal gland and the habenular hab nucleus, and the, both of them comprised of the epithalamus. In this video will focus primarily on the habenulum. The habenulum is a structure that is located roughly on the midline, dorso to the thalamus right here, the habinulum sits right in this trigonal area called the habinular trigone, and it's a little bit anterior and a little bit lateral to the pineal gland right here. We don't know too much about the function of this structure in specifics, but we do know that it connects the limbic system, the basal ganglia, with the brainstem, and therefore we know that it takes part in the basic emotions and smell, which are both components of the limbic system. And we'll cover that in more detail in the coming slides. So this is a more close-up look of the habinulum. And this is a more top-down view of the structure. So just to orient you, we have the thalamus over here on both sides. We have the pineal gland. And we have the superior colliculus, the inferior colliculus, and the rest of the brainstem over here. And as we just talked about, the habinular trigone sits just lateral on each side of the, uh, of the uh, pineal gland. So the composition is, goes as follows. We have the medial and lateral habinular nuclei around the habinular trigone right over here. And these two structures are interconnected by the habinular commissure in the middle. Now there are inputs and output structures leading into and out of the habinulum respectively. The input is mostly carried by the striae medullaris right over here, anterior to it. And it's basically medial to the thalamus over here. The output tracts is not listed here, and it's called the fasciculus retroflexus, and we'll go over each of those in more detail. This is a diagram depicting the inputs and the output of the habinulum. Now, obviously there are many connections, but we'll only focus on the one that are key to the uh, board exam. So we have the medial habinulum and the lateral habinular nuclei. They carry, as we talked about, input from the striae medullaris and send output to the fasciculus retroflexus. Now, the afferent has two bundles within the striae medullaris. The medial habinulum typically receives information from limbic system, such as the septal nuclei or the diagonal band of Broca, listed here. And we'll cover each of those structures in future videos. The lateral habinular nuclei receive information from mostly lateral hypothalamus and the basal ganglia. I typically like to remember the, the, the connections between them by their anatomical relations. The medial habinular nuclei receives information from the more medial structures, which is the limbic system and the septal nuclei and the diagonal band of Broca. And the lot more lateral structure, the lateral habinular nuclei receives information from more lateral structures such as the basal ganglia 
and the lateral hypothalamus. Now eventually these these nuclei will send information through the fasciculus retroflexus into the interpeduncular nuclei and eventually wind up in the raphe nucleus. Now this is just a another representation of the striae medullaris which forms the horizontal ridge on the medial surface of the thalamus and it ends in the habinular nucleus. The other way to look at what striae medullaris brings to the habinulum is by looking at the anatomical proximity of the structure. Here we have the striae medullaris highlighted by the red line. We have the habinular commissure highlighted here, the posterior commissure, and the pineal gland right here. As you can see here, the beginning of the striae medullaris is very close in anatomical structure to the septal area, which contains the septal nuclei. The hypothalamus, highlighted by the triangle here, as well as the anterior thalamus, and all of those contribute to the input from the striae medullaris into the habinulum. I just wanted to clarify something that I find difficult and confusing when I was studying this part of the, the brain anatomy. There are actually two striae medullarises in the brain. The first one is what we just talked about, the striae medullaris of the thalamus. The second one is actually the striae medullaris of the medulla, which sits in the, in the floor of the fourth ventricle that marks the rostral border of the med medulla, as listed over here. There is another term that is similar to the striae medullaris that we just talked about, and that's called the striae terminalis. The striae terminalis is a completely different structure that connects between the, the amygdala over here with the hypothalamus over here and it travels lateral to the thalamus as outlined here. And so don't get those two uh, structures confused. So here we have the major output tracks for the habinulum, which is called the fasciculus retroflexus. Now this structure has also other names, which is listed here, and it's called the habinulo interpeduncular tracts, where the minors fasciculus. Now it's easy to understand that the habinulo interpeduncular tracts is basically just another word to connect the beginning and the end of the structures. The habinular nucleus is listed over here in this diagram and this figure over here and the fasciculus retroflexus is represented by this line over here and you can see that it passes medial to the red nucleus and ends in the interpeduncular ganglion and hence the name habinulo interpeduncular tracts. And this is a more axial representation of the same picture that we just showed in the last slide. Here we have the medial and lateral habinular nuclei as depicted here and they typically travel down over here to this spot over here, medial to the ret nuclei, and this structure is called the habinulo interpeduncular tracts or the fasciculus retroflexus, and the structure will continue to go down deeper in, into the interpeduncular ganglion. Here are my references. I hope you find this helpful. We'll see you next time.